Hello, it's Dale here. Um, I'm going to show you in a series of videos the, you, how to use silk fibres. A lot of people have asked me about the different silk fibres. And so I'm, today I'm going to just talk about tussa silk, which is the wild silk. There are two, I mean, all the silk you know comes from the little tiny cocoons and spun in different ways. It first sort of uh, came to in BC in China. Uh, where apparently one of the princesses dropped her cocoon into her tea and it unraveled. Anyway, besides all that, this is tussa silk. It's the wild silk and it is um, quite fluffy and it's a good one to start with. Um, I've been doing this for nearly 30 years making paper and at some point silk paper making t uh, phrase turned into silk fusion because in fact what you're doing is you're fusing it. And I'm going to just very quickly show you a piece. So I pull out the fibres, I've got a piece of netting, the netting quality doesn't matter, it's just whatever you've got, this may have come from Spotlight, I don't know. And I put the fibres down, overlay them in one direction. You want to, if I've made a lot of garments and so for this, for clothing, you want it reasonably um, firm and structured. So I'm not worrying about the colours, this particular colour is one of ours called Brianna. It's a very popular, it's named after Jacinta's daughter, one of her daughters. Then you've done one layer coming down. You go back and do a second layer. I appreciate that I'm going a little bit fast and the fibres, some people like them to be aligned extremely well. It doesn't bother me that much. And so that's my second layer. Now this is just for today because I do do it other ways as well. So then I'll come back and I'll do the third layer going the other way. This is to help it give strength. Now if you're a felt maker you'll know that uh, what you do is to get wool going is to uh, felt it, you know, rub it and things. And if you've, and if you've had small children and you'll know if they dribble on the front of their jerseys that it uh, will felt. Very annoying. But here we go. Silk will not do this. So I've put my fibres down. And I'll put, I'll put another piece of netting on the top. All I'm using are two sheets of netting on a piece of plastic. And then I take uh, water, soapy water, dishwashing liquid, and wet it because you want the liquid to get right in. If you don't do this, you'll end up with rather a spongy interior. And you'll bring it back to me and say, look, it's all funny in the middle. And I'll say, it's because you didn't listen to this part when I told you. And so that is to get that water in. So just like felt makers do. And then you turn it over, get that water into that side, this inside this one. And if you need to, you can mop it up before you do the next stage. But I'm not going to. It'll be all right. So there it is all soaked up. I've got my trusty paintbrush. I'm not doing any painting, but there you go. And then I make a mix of 50-50 textile medium. This is the only medium I ever use, and I always do it 50-50 because I don't want it hard. Um, if I want to make firm paper, then I'll use another method, use a, use a different thing, which I will show. So and then you paint it all on. It's all nicely glued because this is a glue, so it's fusing it together. And here we go on the other side. And then when it's done, you leave it to dry. Sometimes I hang it on the line and it drip dries or I just leave it out and round it about. In our climate, it's pretty warm, so it doesn't take that long to dry. But if you look here, you'll see uh, there how it's fusing together. I shouldn't have lifted that. I just leave it until it's all done. And also at this stage, you could shape it if you wanted to, you know, manipulate it up into wrinkles. So this is the fibre. These are some of the sorts of colours that we sell. You can see how bright and uh, they are. I mean, because we have pastel ones, but I'm always attracted to the bright colours. Uh, and they come in 50 gram bags. So this is a piece I've made uh, yesterday, just to have it all ready. And you can see how lovely and uh, what a sheen. Silk has such a natural sheen to it. It's a bit wrinkly on the back because that was where it was on the netting and I moved it around the garden a little bit. Sometimes I just drape them over the plants to dry. And this is another one where I have 
used exactly the same and I've twin needled it. Doesn't it make a lot of difference once you start to put stitch into it and moving with the colours? This is a sample for a garment that I made a number of years ago. I've made a lot of garments with it. It breathes very well and uh, really I would only ever recommend it's nice and soft and movable. But you can do all sorts of stuff with it. For instance, here's a little flower and I'll show you how to make that another time. So I hope you found that interesting and useful and I'll be back next week with part two. Bye.